So in the last talk, we talked about humility being the truth not only about who I am, but more importantly, the truth about who God is and who I am in light of that. You need confidence in God. St. Faustino was always talking about the importance of confidence in God. Confidence in God what? Confidence in God that he will provide for your needs. Confidence that God loves you. Confidence that God is going to take care of you. Confidence that God is the answer. Confidence that God has created you for a purpose with a meaning. It's a little bit difficult to acquire that confidence, so we have to do a little bit of meditation. That means reflecting upon stuff. St. Albert the Great said, the greater your confidence in God, the more persistent your confidence in God, the more he's going to answer what it is you are asking to be confident about. And I don't want to mean that we, don't, we just sit back and don't do anything. We have to do our best, and God will take care of the rest. Very good. St. John of the Cross on one occasion they didn't have any food for the next day. He had already done all that he could. He had to do other activities that were calling upon him. And some of the friars were saying, Oh, St. John, please help us. We have no food. And he says, Is God not going to take care of us? Does God have the power to take care of us? Oh, yes, Father. Does God love us? Yes, Father. And what happened the next day? They still had no food. About midday, a man arrived with enough food for everybody in the community. And he said, how did you bring this? He said, well, I had a dream last night that you guys needed food, so I brought it. This happened many times in the life of St. John Bosco. He was responsible for taking care of children. This has happened many times in my own life. God provides. God provides. God is faithful. Now, how do we have confidence in God? The holy saints tell us we need to reflect upon God's qualities. So God is omnipotent. That means he's so powerful, he created the universe out of nothing. We have a well-ordered universe that is so large. It's immensely large. It's so well fine-tuned. It's so beautiful. We come outside and we look at nature and we see how beautiful this is. And God created all of this and out of nothing. And it started off as a great explosion and the Big Bang and it seems like so much chaos. And all of that chaos somehow got not only well ordered, but absolutely beautiful. Your God has the power to accomplish anything. He's omniscient. He knows all. He knows everything. He knows exactly what your thoughts are. He knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows everything. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. You, you don't have to worry about, oh, is God, am, am I in God's mind? Does God care about me? Does God love me? God is present everywhere. He knows all things. He created this entire created universe out of love for you. You are important. You are special. You are in his mind, in his heart. Not only that, but he loves you so much that he became a man and suffered the worst tortures. He was completely innocent. That means the pain and the suffering was even worse for him because he was so good. He experienced what it was like to be separated from God out of love for you. And not only that, so that you can't say, where is God when I'm suffering? Because then he's showing you where he's at. He's suffering with you. And he would have done that for you if you were the only person who ever lived. So when we look about, when we look at a distrust of myself and we balance that with a confidence of God, remember humility is a truth about myself. What is the truth about myself? Yes, I'm fallen. Yes, I'm weak. Yes, I have all of these negative tendencies. But the truth is God loves me. God gives me strength. God created me for a purpose. God has an end in mind. God has a plan for my life. God will provide for all my needs. And what does that demand? A great God like that, it demands of us a response of love. That's the easiest thing. I said that there's two things to keep in mind. Humility whenever we're kind of like questioning why bad things are happening. But what should be on the forefront of my mind? Love. It's the only response we need. God is love. And every little thing that you do, that unites you to God. An act of love unites you to God. That makes you holy. Of course, your, your, your act of love is in union with the will of God. So you're trying to do it out of 
have a love for God because it's God's will. So for example, you're here, I said be present when you're playing. Yeah, play with all your heart. Play with great love, that makes you holy. Pray with great love, that makes you holy. Eat with great love, that makes you holy. Speak with great love, that makes you holy. Love should be at the forefront of your mind and of your heart. Now, earlier I said that we have the enemy, which is the world, the flesh, and the devil, and they tell us lies about what? They tell us lies about the truth about who we are. They also tell us lies about God and the truth of God. The world says, if you turn on the television, I don't ever hear anything that is saying God loves you, God is good, God is real, God is sustaining, God is the meaning and the purpose and fulfillment of your life. When I turn on the TV, that's not what I hear. I hear that I am God, so to speak. I make my own rules. Whatever makes me feel good is good for me. Don't impose your morals on me when in fact God created all of us the same with a heart that longs for him. So we have to be careful what we ingest. I know that they don't say it directly, but when you watch television or you're watching YouTube, they're putting ideas into our mind indirectly. Our flesh ourselves, our concupiscence, tells ourselves that we don't need God because we have that tendency to want to make ourselves God. If you think about Adam and Eve in the garden, what did the devil say to Eve? Oh, you can't trust God. Did God really say that? Does God really care if you eat from a tree? How stinking stupid is that? Come on, come on, you know better. You know better. That's the same temptation we get from the devil today. Again, not an angry monster trying to scare you. A whisper encouraging you to do what you know is wrong. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of tips. I call it 4PL. And this works so good. I'm going to be the first to admit, I struggle with confidence in God. A lack of confidence in God is my primary defect, meaning that I worry too much. When I was doing my little examination of conscience by St. Ignatius Loyola, yeah, I could say, oh, I didn't do this, or oh, I didn't do that. But what God always convicts me of in my heart, he's always telling me, you don't really trust me. And I say, how do you know? Because if you trusted me, you wouldn't be worried. So when we're worrying, it means we have a lack of confidence in God. So four, so the number four, the letter P and the, and the letter L. Four P L. This is a little saying I made up. The first P is prayer. God deserves our prayer at all times. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm constantly mumbling words. But God created the human soul to pray to find rest in prayer, to depend upon prayer, to give us graces and the things that we need by praying. That also keeps us humble because it reminds us who God is. It's not me, it's him. Before I do any activity, if I was a humble person, remember I have a distrust of myself, I have a confidence in God. Before I do anything, I would pray. Even a small prayer. If I'm gonna go play basketball, Lord be with me as I play basketball. If I'm gonna take a test, Lord be with me as I take this test. And it doesn't even necessarily need to be a vocal, ejaculatory, a short prayer. It doesn't have, it could be Jesus, I trust in you, yes. It can just be a remembrance that God is present. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Now, there are going to be times where you need harder prayer. We've got things that we have to do. We have family obligations. And it seems like, oh my gosh, like I've got so much to do. Things are going so badly. Sometimes God wills us to pray more, to pray longer. So there are going to be moments in your life when you're trying your hardest, you're doing your vocation, you're being a student, or one day if you're a parent, you're being a mom, or you're being a dad, and it's going to be God's will that you stop all the busy work to actually stop and pray. Your soul needs that. It helps you to have the sense of God's presence. It builds confidence in God. And that relational part with God is what's going to help you have greater confidence. So the first P is prayer. Sometimes it's a short prayer. Sometimes it's a long prayer. The next P stands for presence. I said that God was omnipresent. He's present everywhere. Having a sense of the presence of God is a great and easy way to a holy life. What I mean having a sense of God's presence? Just being aware that God is present. So let's say, for example, you, you have a stress. That stress induces you to pray. Say, God, help me to do this thing. That prayer should lead you, because you're not just throwing up, you know, ritual words up into the air. You're actually talking to somebody. That prayer should remind you that God is present. When God is present, that gives you greater confidence because you no longer feel alone. When God is present, that gives you greater trust. Confidence, trust. 
when God is present that keeps you from sinning. Because a lot of times we sin, if you sin, we sin because we're in our own mind, or we sin because we're alone, or we're talking, or we're self-talking negative to each other or to ourselves. But when God is present, it makes me think outside of myself. It makes me aware of this other force that's present. So for example, earlier we did our examination. You guys went out into the hermitage and you were alone with the Lord writing and you felt such peace. You can have that peace at all times, in all places. The example I like to use is, let's say for example, you are at, let's say the mall. You went to the mall for something and you're there with a friend. Your, your best friends, this friend spent the night, you're, you're there together. When you go to the mall, you see another friend. And you say, hey, Sally, how are you? Oh, I'm very good. You have this friend with you. You're not talking to her or him, but you know that they're there, right? You didn't just forget that they were present. Similarly with God. You don't necessarily always need to be talking to him, but be confident that he is present with you. You're aware that he's there with you, and that will change your disposition to one of fear, to one of great confidence. There's this book called The Practice of the Presence of God, The Best Rule for a Holy Life by this friar named Brother Lawrence. And he said any time he had a sense of God's presence, things went very, very well for him. He was not very good at many of the tasks. He wasn't very smart. But every time he said, God, be present with me. God, help me. Everything went very, very, very well. Because God is, it's not just like a make-believe game I'm playing in my head. God is really present. God is constantly present in, and so this is, this presence, it's kind of like a two-edged presence. So, I, yeah, be aware of God's presence. And then the other part of that same present is in the present moment. God exists right here, right now. He's exists for all of eternity, but he is revealing himself to you. He is speaking to you. He is present to you right here, right now. Part of our fallen nature being in the human condition is that we worry about things that are going to happen next week. We worry about stuff that's going to happen tomorrow. We worry about things that are going to happen next month. Sometimes we play psychological games in our heads and you get mad at somebody and they haven't even done anything to you. You're just imagining if this, I could just imagine myself right now. I go out there and then she'd probably say this and I would say this and I'd get so angry at them. And you're like living a false world in your brain or you're worried about things that don't exist. All that exists is the present. So you are going to be stressed. You are going to get pulled from all various directions. And God is saying to you, say a short prayer, right here, right now, I'm present. What is my will for you? Right here, right now. God does not want you to live in your, in your mind in the future. Yes, there are going to be times where it's necessary for you to prepare for things that are happening, but in the present moment, is that God's will for you? He is present. And if you are present and you're aware of his presence, you have the third P, which is so ridiculously powerful. It's, it's everything. It's everything. It's, it's where your confidence comes from. That third P is providence. God provides for all. For your spiritual needs, absolutely 1,000%. For your physical needs, According to Jesus in the scriptures, you have nothing to worry about. If God takes care of the birds, if God takes care of the lilies of the field, he's going to take care of you. You do your best, God will take care of the rest. So that means you can't be sitting at home at a couch potato. Oh, don't worry, God will help me for my test tomorrow. Click, 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 more TV, more TV. No. Are you surrendering your life to the will of God in the present moment? You're doing your best. Do not worry. I'll give you an example of trust in divine providence. I'll give you two examples. They were talking about Rome earlier, and that made me have flashbacks to my time in Rome where I was living. I, every, it was like my mantra. Presence, providence, presence, providence, providence, providence. I just have the sense of God's presence, and baby, he's going to work those providential occurrences. And the greater my confidence, according to St. Albert the Great, the greater he's going to act. The more Because it just honors him so greatly. That's why in the Bible it says that those who are like little children will enter the kingdom of God. Because little children aren't doubting whether mommy and daddy are going to feed them. They're not even worried about that. They're not even thinking about that. They're lost and they're happy doing whatever they're doing. They're not worried and stressed about stuff. We get stressed as we get older. So I was in Rome. We had to be at a pilgrimage tour that was going to like take us around these catacombs or something to this extent. And we had to be there as a group to go on this tour or they, we would miss out on this rare opportunity. 
And so one of the girls in the group, who was a little bit low IQ, no offense, and she had high heels on, and she wasn't dressed appropriately, and she's like, I've got to pee. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me, dude. Like, right now, there's no bathrooms around here anywhere. And the whole group was like, this girl, man. Like, why is she wearing high heels, like, walking through the streets of Rome like this? Don't they know there's cobblestone? She's going to get her high heels stuck in something? And then I was like, I guess I'll take her to the bathroom. And they're like, we're not taking her. She's just going to have to be by herself. And I was like, I felt like God was saying, be a man. Don't be like these people. And I was like, fine. And then so I went. She went to the bathroom. And she's like, well, I guess we're just going to stay here. Thanks for staying with me. And I was like, girl, you better get, you better get your, put your tennis shoes on. Because we went back to the house with this place we were staying. Get your tennis shoes on. We're going to book it. There's no way we're going to make it. I was like, trust in Providence, girl. So we went into the subway system. The whole time she's like, they were so rude. I can't believe they didn't leave. And the whole time I was thinking, yeah, I would, if it wasn't for my heavy conscience, I would have left your butt too. But anyways, <laughs> that's besides the point. I kept reassuring her. I kept saying, don't worry, trust in God's providence. I just learned about this. So I was all super like eager and zealous. Trust in God's providence. And then there was, we got out of the subway and there was a man selling umbrellas. And she was like, which way do we go, left or right? I was like, to be honest with you, I have no idea because I wasn't paying attention. I was planning on being part of the group. And this man was selling umbrellas, so I bought an umbrella. And next thing you know, I see the group coming from the right. And I was like, look, there's our group. And they're soaking wet. And I was like, what happened? He's like, we, we got out on the wrong stop and blah, 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 blah. And, I was like, and there, there I am with my umbrella, me and this girl walking. All a part of God's providence. There was another time that same trip where we wanted to get into Santa Croce where they had the relics of the true cross. They had the little board that was on top of Jesus' cross. And it was closed. And again, I, I've been having so many providential things happen to me because of my confidence. Then I, they were like, there's no way we missed it. I was like, dude, check this out. Like, why are we walking over there? It's closed. I was like, don't worry. I was like, How, do you know anybody there? I was like, no, don't worry. I know the Lord. And we went over there, and there was some guy. It was already closed, and we were, like, standing there in front of the doors, and this guy opened the door, and I was like, hey, can we get in there? Well, it's closed. I was like, yeah, but, you know, you got the key. Come on, come on, come on. We came all the way from the United States. And they let us in to see all these holy relics. Now you could say, that wasn't God. That was chance and the mercy of some man. Yes, God works through ordinary instruments. He's not going to just be like, he could. He's not going to snap his fingers and there I am. Oh, I by located in the church. Maybe, I'm not that holy yet. But maybe one day, God works through ordinary activity. He moves the hearts of individuals. There are pious people out there. There are some people who are not pious. And God will use them. So remember, pray. Have a sense of God's presence. Have confidence in God's providence. God does not want you to worry. He doesn't want you to be a little toad. Oh, what if this? And what if that? And what if this? Oh, I'm so stressed. Oh, oh. He doesn't want that for you. He wants you to be present and loving right here, right now. But let me be honest with you. Life isn't all flowers and roses. So what happens when it's God's will that things don't go your way? Even though I'm super confident. Well, remember, God is omniscient. He knows all. He knows what's better for you. And you know what's better than your physical well-being? Sometimes it's necessary for your spiritual well-being for there to be physical suffering. And so the final P is purgatory, purgation, purification. See, these are all in alphabetical order. Prayer, P-R-A. Presence, P-R-E. Providence, P-R-O. Purgatory, you are. So sometimes it's necessary that we be purged. Sometimes God makes you wait. Sometimes it's necessary that bad things happen for God to bring about something greater. In that case, you need to be patient. Patient endurance of sufferings is a way to get rid of your temporal punishment due to sin in purgatory. So yes, it could be that you, you need to be sick and you could be saying, God, why am I sick? I don't like this. It doesn't feel good. And if you were silent, he would tell you, you're sick because you need to be purified. You are too worried about yourself. Remember I said earlier that sometimes in life, if you're not naturally humble, God will humble you. There's a saying that God exalts the humble. He fills them with his grace, but he humbles the proud. He, he allows them to suffer because suffering endears men to Christ. Because that in Christ in his humanity didn't walk around like a rich guy to identify with you. Christ in his humanity walked around like a poor suffering man so that 
because everybody's going to face suffering. That means every opportunity that you're suffering is an opportunity for him to pull you close to his sacred heart. So there will be times where there will be suffering, but you can, be, you can still trust that God is going to bring something extraordinary out of it. And it's going to be a good that you recognize because he works all things for those who love the Lord. Confidence, confidence, confidence. Let me read, let me see your Bible, boy. Please, you're a good holy man. He's a good holy man, carries his Bible. He has the red ribbon already to the right passage because he's a good holy boy. All right, let me read this to you. These are not my words. These are the words of Jesus. And he said also, remember what I said earlier? Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. This is what he says. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor about your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add one cubit to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith, therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek all of these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow. Tomorrow will be anxious enough for itself. Let the day's own trouble be sufficient for today. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.